Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the story and endings of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. This video will provide a quick and snappy recap of events leading up to the six possible story outcomes awaiting lost child Gregory, his animatronic guardian Freddy, and the villainous security guard turned killer bunny, Vanny. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the mysteries of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex. FNAF Security Breach takes place within the newly built Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, the largest pizzeria Fazbear Entertainment has ever built. It's so big in fact that the building functions more like a mall, with a daycare, disco arcade, many restaurants, a golf course, laser tag arena, the list goes on and on. The Mega Pizzaplex is also home to a brand new roster of rocking animatronic mascots, including a new incarnation of Freddy Fazbear himself. Everything is going well until one night during their stage show, the animatronics malfunction and the show ends early. Everyone is sent home, but one guest stays. A child named Gregory. Upon rebooting, Freddy discovers Gregory hiding inside his chest compartment, a place normally used for stowing cakes during birthday party events. This child seems to want to avoid being caught by the night guard Vanessa, and so Freddy agrees to help him to the exit before closing time. I know how to get you out of here. Climb back into my chest cavity. There is still time, but we must hurry. If I am spotted, I will certainly be taken back to my room. Freddy instinctively looks out for this child, acting more like a human than a machine, covering for Gregory at every turn. Okay, look, we're like 15 minutes from closing and some kid is sneaking around backstage. If you see anything, notify me immediately. I already alerted the others. I told you she was after me. I said nothing. I will keep you safe. Let us go. Unfortunately, the star animatronics Roxanne Wolf, Glamrock Chica, and Montgomery Gator, along with many of the other worker bots, have been hacked, entering their security mode. Although something is not quite right with them, they seem unhinged and bloodthirsty, seeking out trespassers and killing them on sight. But strangely, Freddy does not have this same urge to kill. After failing to reach the exit on time, Gregory becomes trapped inside the Pizzaplex as lockdown protocol initiates. Forced to reunite with Freddy, the two set out to find an alternate exit. Along the way, Gregory is caught by Vanessa and discovers her twisted alter ego, Vanny. I'm trapped. I'll bet you think you're real clever, Gregory. Yeah, I know your name. You're in big trouble. This is not the night to be wasting my time. So. You are going to wait right there in Lost and Found until your parents or the police arrive. Are you having fun yet? While Vanessa is a short-tempered security guard, Vanny is far worse. Dressing in a rabbit costume, she dances around looking to capture children to use for the dark purposes of the sinister entity controlling her like a puppet. An entity known as Glitchtrap. We'll have more on this creepy character later. An interesting side note about Vanny is that she radiates a glitching effect whenever she gets too close. Not only does this make her hard to see during gameplay, it also prevents animatronics, including Freddy, from seeing her. This is why Vanessa and by extension Vanny are never attacked by security bots. An override is in place to prevent this. Gregory ends up becoming separated from Freddy several times throughout the course of the game, and as the hours tick by, notices that Freddy and the other animatronics are becoming more and more cracked and withered, as if something is draining them of their power and corrupting their programming. It falls to Gregory to then save Freddy as he begins to power down. Eventually, after making it to the parts and service department, Gregory manages to save Freddy, and the two can continue their adventure. We also observe another conversation between Vanessa and Freddy, where she states the Pizzaplex has no record of Gregory in their database. I found him earlier and locked him up and lost and found. That is great news. He can be returned to his parents. He can't. 
turns out, there's no record of him. Gregory also comes across a series of animatronic schematics for Chica, Roxy, and Monty in the parts and service lab. He decides if they are to survive until 6am when the doors of his small unlock once more, then Freddy will need upgrades from his good friends. And so begins the quest to fully upgrade Freddy. This quest leads Gregory into the neon-soaked maze of Phaser Blast, where he acquires the Faz Blaster, and the swampy depths of Monty Golf, where he seeks out the Faz Cam. Both of these items can be used as weapons to stun the various animatronic terrors on patrol. Also while exploring the Pizzaplex, Gregory encounters a series of arcade machines titled Princess Quest. Now these arcade machines are key to the story of the game, and we will discuss them later in this video. Gregory manages to defeat either Monty or Glamrock Chica, depending on choices the player makes during their adventure. He then upgrades Freddy with the perk acquired from their victory, Chica's voice box or Monty's claws respectively. But things aren't quite over yet. Gregory is forced to find and fix a robot head in order to face his final challenge at Roxy's Raceway. The repair station is found in a maintenance bay above the Fazcade, and it is here that Gregory comes face to face with a terrifying spider-like animatronic and DJ of this dance club, DJ Music Man. With the head fixed and fitted to the robotic driver of the race car, Gregory manages to run down Roxy and remove her eyes. Freddy is now fully upgraded and the two make a break for the exit as the timer finally ticks over to 6am. However, instead of leaving we do receive the option to put these upgrades to good use. Children have been going missing after all, and if we are to stop Vanny and the culprit behind her mind control, Freddy and Gregory will have to stick around a little longer to tie up some loose ends. Freddy, it's open, let's go! No, I cannot exit this facility. Of course you can! Come on, we can hide you somewhere. Without a recharge station, my systems would shut down within an hour. It is a safety precaution. It is my design. This is where I must stay. I will miss you. Freddy, if I leave now, nothing will change, will it? There will be more disappearances. Yes, I am afraid that is correct. There are areas we have not investigated. Lead the way, Superstar. And so we come to the endings themselves. There are currently six known endings at the time of writing this video. We'll take a look at each in turn. You see, while not all of these endings are canon, they do all contain valuable information which help explain the overarching story Security Breach aims to tell. Like jigsaw pieces, by themselves you miss the full picture, but combine everything and it becomes crystal clear. So let's get started with an analysis of the first ending. The most common ending players will unlock during the game is this one. Gregory escapes through the front door of the Pizzaplex and remains hunted by Vanny for the rest of his life. Children continue to go missing, presumably being used to harvest remnants to bring back William Afton's glitch trap. The key point to take away from this ending, however, is the fate of Gregory. Most children would return home to their parents, but Gregory does not. Instead, he sleeps on the street. But why? Earlier in the game, Vanessa mentions to Freddy that there is no record of Gregory on their system, which means he did not enter the mall as a guest. Instead, he snuck in illegally, hence why at the beginning of the game he was so desperate to avoid security. Gregory doesn't have a home, or parents of his own. He was a homeless orphan who entered the Pizzaplex to escape the cruel outside world and get to be a kid for a little while, enjoying the sights and sounds of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. Unfortunately, he picked the wrong night to do so. The second ending shows Gregory and Freddy escaping through a loading bay and driving off in a company van. 
Freddy said he cannot survive outside of a pizza plex as he needs access to the recharge stations dotted about the building to stay alive. This ending, while silly, gives us another key piece to tie into the true ending. We see that, with additional power, Freddy can in fact survive outside of the pizza plex. The Afton ending is by far the most elaborate to unlock. Players are required to brave the endgame with no option to save and must fully upgrade Freddy with all animatronic perks in order to access a secret area below Roxy's raceway. Taking a one-way trip down a barely functional elevator shaft, Gregory and Freddy find themselves in a cavernous environment, where the ruins of an old pizzeria are located. This is the pizzeria from Five Nights at Freddy's 6. The building Fazbear founder Henry Emily lured Michael Afton, his father William, and the other haunted animatronics containing the remnants of William's child victims before burning it to the ground, finally stopping William Afton once and for all and freeing the souls of his victims. Or so it seemed. In the following game, FNAF Help Wanted, a new malicious character appeared in the form of Green Rabbit Glitch Trap. It is my belief that after being doomed to an eternity in animatronic hell, as seen in Ultimate Custom Night, Afton found a way to escape when circuit boards from the animatronics he haunted, such as Springtrap, were scanned into the game code for Help Wanted to speed up development. Afton's remnant or soul residue remained on these parts, and so he found a way to escape his hell and transfer into a digital form. From here, he influenced various beta testers into assisting his return to a physical form, eventually discovering the perfect candidate in Vanessa. So Vanessa and Vanny are one and the same. The Vanny side of her persona controlled by Glitch Trap, and the Vanessa side free-willed but scared of disobeying her puppet master. Because this location was where William died, it is where his soul is strongest and easiest to transfer from a digital state to a physical one. We find him in a charge station below the pizzeria, powering up into the remains of his Springtrap suit, again a body where his remnant would remain strongest. Glitchtrap has been using Vanessa to hack Fazbear Entertainment's security protocols, explaining why the animatronics turned into killing machines. The techs have been struggling to fix some serious glitches with the robots. I'm not sure what exactly is wrong, except that it's making the robots more eerie than entertaining. Apparently, the glitch extended beyond the robots. It went system-wide. It began infecting all the machines, and when the techs traced the glitch back to its origin, it led them to you. In fact, Freddy comments how he was brought down into the depths of the old pizzeria with his friends, where they were presumably infected by the glitch trap virus. Just like Vanessa, they fell under his control. I have been here before. She brought me here. I found myself for the first time when I cleared the path. I did not want to, but I had no choice. Now I have a choice. I have changed. My friends are here. They are so angry, confused. Glitchtrap now sucks the power from these animatronics, explaining their withered state throughout the game. But more than this, we get the sense that Freddy takes William Afton's resurrection personally. Stop him. What was that? Are you okay? He is trying to take control of me. I do not think I can fight it for long. He? What is that thing? Throughout the game, Freddy also acts differently to the other, more hostile animatronics. He makes several strange comments that allude to him being more than a mere robot AI, but rather a sentient being. Here are a few examples. It's like the whole place is trying to get me. I am not. Why? I do not know. I want to help you. There you are. I was so worried. I will miss you. I am not me. 
Now this is all theory discussion, but my best interpretation of events at this time is that Freddy also contains a resurrected human soul, that of William Afton's son, Michael. Michael Afton also perished in the fire at this pizzeria, and it is therefore possible that his soul remained trapped in this location. We know Fazbear Entertainment frequently cuts corners and reuses parts from older animatronics. There is a decent possibility that some of these parts, much like the circuit board scanned for help wanted, were reused from this old location before the new one, the Megaplex, was built over it allowing Michael's consciousness to return when Freddy was rebooted after the glitch trap hack. This explains why he is able to hold off his father's attempts to hack him during the climactic boss fight. It's father versus son all over again. After burning glitch traps resurrected William Afton several times, the pizzaplex explodes and the child souls trapped inside the scrap animatronics once again rise up to claim their tormentor dragging him back to the animatronic hell he deserves. William may always come back, but he rarely manages to stay for very long. The fire ending is a curious one. In this ending, we see Freddy and Gregory escaping the pizzaplex after they light a fire to burn it to the ground. From the way Freddy says it's time to end this, we get more confirmation that he has a very aware, very human side to him. One who seeks to stop Fazbear Entertainment from harming anyone else. During their escape, Vanny grabs Gregory, and as Freddy rushes over to help, both are sent careening over the rooftop, hitting the floor and dying on impact. Gregory unmasks Fanny, and it is revealed that, yes, she is Vanessa. However, a post credit sequence reveals Vanessa to be seemingly alive and well, looking down sorrowfully on the body of a person that looks just like her. So, twins, right? Well, my first reaction to this sequence, before spending time piecing everything together, was that yes, these two are sisters. But if we take into account our previous discussion of how souls become tied to the location they died in, then this ending instead serves as symbolism. It is simply saying that Vanessa was never saved from Glitchtrap's control, and so once Vanny dies, her soul remains forever restless and trapped inside the Mega Pizzaplex, leading further evidence to our Afton family resurrection theory. There isn't too much to say about the bad Vanny ending. During their trip through Phaser Blast, Gregory and Freddy discover a secret room near a catwalk above the arena. This is where Vanessa hid away and secretly hacked Fazbear's systems. Freddy, who has been attacked and dismantled by Vanny's rogue security bots, manages to guide Gregory to the override controls, turning the bots back on their master. This leads to Vanny's gruesome demise, as she is ripped limb from limb by her own weaponized robots. We can gain information from this ending, however. Firstly, it confirms that yes, Vanny was responsible for hacking into the animatronics and causing them to go rogue. And secondly, a newspaper article states that despite the mess, Fazbear Entertainment once again plans to reopen in the future basically confirming more locations and therefore games are coming soon. The final ending is what most would refer to as Security Breach's true closure. To unlock it, we must save Vanessa from her Vanny state, and to do this, we need to seek out and complete all three Princess Quest arcade machines. These pixel art themed video games originated from a mobile version of FNAF Help Wanted. Staff seem confused as to why this game was ever ported to arcade cabinets, and even more confused as to the strange behaviour these cabinets exhibit. Refusing to work unless played in order, and never turning off even when unplugged from a power source. They seem almost paranormal. Haunted. And, well, that's because they are. You see, Princess Quest is not just a video game. It is in fact Vanessa's digital prison, one created to hold her by Glitchtrap after he possessed her while she worked as a beta tester for Fazbear's gaming division, testing Help Wanted. 
If Gregory finds and completes each of a Princess Quest minigames in order, he frees Vanessa of her digital prison and allows her to break free of her Vanny persona. This relinquishing the control Glitchtrap has over her mind. Now able to control her own actions once more, Vanessa's good side takes over once more and she leaves the Pizzaplex with Gregory and the still functional Freddy head. With the robotics engineering skills she learnt as Glitchtrap's disciple, it stands to reason Vanessa would be able to find a way to rebuild Freddy eventually. Now if we bring all of these ending pieces together, we can understand the game's true conclusion. Gregory, once a homeless orphan child, now has a mother figure in Vanessa, who he has freed from Glitchtrap's control. They were both alone, but now have each other. Likewise, Freddy, who believed he could never leave the Pizzaplex, discovers he actually can, using other power sources to sustain him. William Afton's remains remain locked below the Pizzaplex, trapped with his past demons, the other haunted animatronics. But his son Michael has found peace with a child he finally did manage to protect. Perhaps finally able to find closure for the terrible act he subjected his younger brother to all those years ago. And with that, we come to the end of my personal take on the story of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. Maybe you have your own theories and thoughts on this narrative, and if so, feel free to share them in the comments section below. Leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and of course, subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.